Um, I mentioned about sort of the Cumbria connection, and uh, we're developing relationships with some tourist boards in the northwest of England as, as well as elsewhere. And um, for a lot of tourist boards, there is that sort of inherent challenge um, in terms of, uh, I suppose, promoting that local connection and promoting um, great people in their destination to actually shout about you know, where they live. Um, and I've been really impressed by some of the initiatives that are happening both at regional tourist board levels as well as um, sort of uh, within Visit Britain and Visit England. So uh, we're looking at various ways absolutely of, uh, of co-promoting. Um, and I think that's where we could see some really interesting developments. I think that TripBod can completely sink some costs and also create a very, very interesting distribution channel because we can match travellers very, very clearly um, exactly with the products that they, that they desire. So, what, yes. what happens if you, get, if you do get a mismatch? For example, you, you know, I say I want to go and play golf and I want to like nice restaurants mm. and the person who's my travel buddy, or travel yeah. pod, sorry, travel pod, another product, travel pod. Who we're also looking to work with. <laughs> um, you know, it either provides, you know, they don't really play golf, but they're going to give you information and their idea of the dress not is not so Absolutely, yeah. Now, this is exactly why a big focus of our resource right now, of our resources is on growing our network, because then we would hope that we can match you much more specifically to somebody who has a good knowledge in that specific area of golfing. And quite often the great thing is, is that because these trip bars are very well connected people themselves, if they don't know directly, they will always know somebody who does. Um, they will also present you with a large variety of information from which you can kind of pick and choose. And um, a lot of our travellers do go and, and sort of check out our recommendations on TripAdvisor and on lots of other sites and we'll check it out with peer reviews and things, which is, which is fantastic because, as Sarah absolutely said, people are using such a wide variety of sites now to, to take a balanced sort of calibrated view of, of their trip planning. So um, I hope that we can uh, match you very closely with somebody who can also then, uh, I suppose, source great local knowledge from their own contacts network and that then you have the choice of which bits of information to pick and choose from that as well. And once you're in destination, do these travel pods get in contact with you at all? Or not? No, at the moment we're a pre-departure travel planning service, but just today um, we've been having discussions um, with some partners about how we then extend the reach of our service both to uh, in-country um, and post-return for all sorts of uh, various service opportunities that we can offer. But again, that's where we quite like to look at working with um, uh, destination tour operators. So, uh, so, so, yeah, quite exciting times. Hi, can I just ask you, Sally, what's your um, geographical penetration? We're global. Where are, where are you? Yeah, we're, we're about 60 countries worldwide. So at the moment, we've got a really big focus on growing in Europe because um, we um, tend to find that we're getting a lot of interest at the moment for short duration holidays in European cities, which is really exciting because, um, as I think Graham knows, the precursor to TripBod, we've been developing the business model for two and a half years because um, there was no blueprint for us to work from. We had sort of uh, developed this from fresh. It was called Your Safe Planet, and that was much more heavily focused on developing areas of the world on a younger traveller set who wanted a bit more more support when they're going on a really big adventure. Now we've, we've shifted that very much and our new branding represents that we are we're much more about sort of uh, very savvy older travellers who quite often are, are travelling regularly um, and to European destinations short haul and short duration. So we're sort of, uh, we're trying to grow very much um, in Europe at the moment. But yeah, sort of 60 countries worldwide, uh, we probably have our, our lowest distribution in North America, I think, at the moment, bizarrely. But I thought that was where you didn't get any earth. Sorry? We do, we get we're fifty fifty with the with the trip boss. It's um, we split it fifty fifty and then we pay the tax on it. So um, so yeah, still yeah. I have a question. As you're probably aware that there there's the problem that in many particular European countries like Austria for instance you need a license to show people around. Mm -hmm. And um, how do you make sure actually in your vetting process that the person that is actually your trip bot is a certified guy? And on the other hand, you probably need a lot of trip bots at the same time. And as this vetting process takes a lot of time, I suppose, how do you make that your business scalable? Yeah. Oh, great question. <laughs> so just as I was saying before to Graham, at the moment we are only pre-departure. So it's an online connection to a local person and they, will, they don't show you around when you're there. We have some um, relationships in development with people who do offer that service. Um, so our vetting process doesn't include whether that person is a local guide, but we do ensure that they are um, a trustworthy character, so we go through a fairly lengthy character referencing process. Um, and uh, so at the moment there isn't the, the meet and greet, There's, it's literally pre-departure yeah. online information that they're providing. Um, 
but really good question about the scaling, and that's something that, um, again, we had, we've basically been developing for quite a while, this, this sort of vetting process. And what we've now been able to do is uh, to turn a portion of that um, into very, very scalable automated systems, so that when somebody applies to become a trip board and they want to receive some information about the process and then they want to submit their references and they want to submit um, all of the documentation, there's a large portion of that that can be done very, very quickly. Um, and at the moment, we've actually got a team of people who are working dedicated just to that process, just to to sort of scale. And um, what we're also finding is that a lot of uh, the partners who we want to work with and who want to work with us, it's very much in their interest to help us find trip bots. Because, for example, for a local tourist board, it's great if they can help us find, say, 20 trip bots in Lancashire. Because then we've got 20 trip bots on Twitter tweeting all day about what great place Lancashire is because they live there, they love it, there's so much on their doorstep that no visitors actually ever get to find out about. Um, so we're finding that our partners are really helping us boost that process. Um, so I'd say that a combination of the, of the scaling of the network has been massive support from partners which has been great. A lot of people hearing about us in the press, loving the idea and saying I'd love to be a trip bod, um, and also being able to sort of almost extend the length of our vetting process so it almost becomes more difficult to be a trip bod to sort of, again, notch up our quality process, but to make the first part of that um, automated through the sites that you can apply now online, which uh, removes a certain cost centre for us. And, and one more question, where do you recruit these trip bots in the first place? So how, how do they come to your site? How, how um, so, come? well, originally we um, grew through our own existing networks, professional and personal networks. Um, we um, have been growing our own sort of professional network, as it were, over the last two and a half years. So we're quite sort of well connected in, um, especially things like the responsible tourism world and local travel world. So it's quite easy to, to start making connections through that. Um, and as I say, partners, um, once you start to make connections with fantastic tourist boards, um, they get it really quickly and then um, start to... Of a scale, so a variety of different sources for trip bonds, really. Yeah. Time for another couple of questions.